This video will cover just some research topics and projects going on in various fields of engineering to give you more insight on what's going on in the world. I'll also talk about what majors might be best for you if a certain project interests you. So let's get into it. In the field of computer science, in 1999, a PhD student who is now a professor at MIT discussed an algorithm to determine how to fold a piece of paper into any conceivable 3D object. Back then, the algorithm wasn't so good and wasn't very efficient. But recently, researchers have created that universal algorithm for folding origami shapes that also minimizes the amount of seams needed. Now, who cares about this, right? Well, origami has more applications than you may realize. We know of origami as folding flat paper to make 3D objects. With these techniques, we can use flat materials to create 3D objects, ranging from nanobots to solar panels on satellites. This can be applied to self-assembling robots that can fold themselves into a desired shape. It can apply to satellites with components that need to unfold while in space because it'd be too big to go up in a rocket like that. Or even when it comes to airbags, they need to pop out in a fraction of a second and be rigid but not too hard to protect the passenger as much as possible. Well, the best model the inflation, you need to model a 3D polyhedron from a flat sheet and they've used software to simulate the opening and folding of an airbag to improve the product. Or when it comes to computer graphics, 3D objects consist of a lot of little triangles. Really any curved shape can be approximated with a lot of flat sides. Remember, computer science is not about programming the next big app or social media site. It's a lot of math, computation, and algorithms that mathematically optimize a solution to various problems that computers can be used to solve. Then moving on, at MIT's Computer Science and Artificial Intelligence Lab, they're working on an algorithm that can see around corners which will have applications in self-driving cars and search and rescue missions. By using a video camera to analyze the light reflections on the ground coming from somewhere around the corner, they're using algorithms to generate plots that give information about where those objects physically are. If you were to see two shadows from around the corner, it might not be easy to determine how close they are to you or each other or anything like that, and often with just the naked eye, we can't pick up as much as a camera can. Now there are currently other techniques to see around corners, but a lot of them use special lasers, and those can get thrown off by other light in the area, which is what researchers are trying to eliminate. Next, on the topic of lasers, Lockheed Martin, being a huge defense company, is going to be testing a high-powered laser on a fighter jet as the Pentagon looks for new ways to use laser technology. Another company called General Atomics was awarded several million dollars recently to also put a laser on a drone. Lasers are becoming more desirable in defense purposes because of their benefits over things like missiles that have much larger impact. Lasers on aircraft is not something new, however producing a practical system has been difficult and previous ones have been very bulky, typically going on very large aircrafts. Now if projects with lasers interest you, then two big majors to consider are physics and electrical engineering. For both of these majors, even just in undergrad, you can take classes or electives on optics, optical engineering, photonics, and lasers. Not all of these are the exact same, but I won't discuss the differences here. But note, optics does not just apply to lasers, and this isn't just used for defense purposes. Optics can apply to telescopes, microscopes, fiber optic communication, surveillance and imaging, night vision, and more. Basically any systems that make use of light in some way. Then moving on to something that may be of interest to electrical or computer engineers, researchers have created drones that have the ability to fly around warehouses and use RFID or radio frequency identification to find packages in an easy and efficient manner. Every year, billions of dollars are lost due to lost inventory in these warehouses. Considering keeping track of so much inventory at large companies is hard to do purely by humans, the researchers hope to use drone technology to catalog and locate items in an efficient way. While an aerospace engineer might work on the drones themselves, electrical engineers are often ones working on wireless communications, including RFID, and computer engineers can also work on circuits, communications, signal processing, and storing data. Next, in the field of quantum computing, there's a lot of research going on, and I can and probably will do a video solely on this sometime. But for now, I'll just give some basics. Things you should realize about quantum computing are right now a fully functioning quantum computer doesn't really exist, at least not to the degree that people are waiting for. Also, quantum computers are not something that will replace your normal computers that you use for schoolwork and to surf the web. They actually wouldn't even be good for those uses. They're meant for other things, and the most famous is basically to ruin current encryption systems. Your online information like passwords, credit card info, and more is secure through encryption algorithms that basically make it so yes, your information can be found, but it would take years using any normal computer to figure it out. But with quantum computers, it could be done much faster. And using quantum computers, we could actually make encryption systems that are truly unbreakable, essentially. Another big application would be database searching, where a quantum computer could search a really big database, like everyone on Facebook, in a much faster amount of time. 
There are many more applications, but overall will speed up computing times for various algorithms by large factors over regular computers. Also note that the jobs in quantum computing right now are really in research and development. There are not an insane amount of jobs like software developer that companies are always looking for. Some of the big companies working on quantum computers include Google, Microsoft, IBM, Intel, and currently probably a few dozen more. But there's also a lot of research going on at universities around the world, where especially if you go on to a master's and PhD, you can look into doing this research. For example, UCLA just recently received a $2 million grant to explore secure quantum communications and memory. One thing about quantum computers is that their transmission speed drops off a lot when they have to communicate over long distances, like over several miles. The team at UCLA is aiming to increase the speed by a few orders of magnitude to around 4 gigabits per second over a distance of around 30 miles. The team will incorporate material science, quantum measurements, quantum information theory, and more into their project. For those considering quantum computing as a job, remember it's not as common as many other fields, but two of the best majors to consider are physics or computer science. I've heard others say that computer engineering or electrical engineering can lead you to quantum computing if you tailor everything right, but I've also seen people say those two aren't as good as the others. If you want to work on the actual manipulation of quantum states and learn more about quantum physics, then you should start with physics. If you want to be more involved with the algorithm and computer theory stuff, then start with computer science and maybe consider a minor in math. But you really need to get a PhD to work on the real research work. Don't expect to see much, if any, real quantum computing information in undergrad. It's more about what you do in grad school. However, these majors are at least somewhere to start. And lastly, in very recent news, Elon Musk just unveiled the Tesla semi-truck, which has a lot of cool features. First off, most of us won't be driving these large trucks though, so why is it such a big deal? Well, there are over a million truck drivers out there who are needed to take lots of cargo from one point to another. It's how Walmart gets all its products delivered to its stores, how grocery stores get their food. But note that while trucks do make up less than 10% of the vehicles on the road, their fuel emissions account for nearly 20% of transportation-related greenhouse emissions in the US. So every electric truck sold has a bigger impact than a single electric car sold. But on to what these trucks can do. The semi-truck with no load, so not carrying anything, can go 0 to 60 miles per hour in 5 seconds, as opposed to normal diesel trucks that take 15 seconds. And at maximum capacity, which is carrying a load of 80,000 pounds, the max that a truck can carry on a highway in the US, the truck can go from 0 to 60 in 20 seconds, which is also way faster than a diesel truck. The vehicle can go 500 miles on a single charge worst case scenario, which is when it's pulling 80,000 pounds and it needs to do as much work as possible. And with the majority of trips being less than 250 miles, a truck driver can do their entire route without needing to recharge. The truck is also more designed like a bullet such that it optimizes airflow to allow for the most amount of miles driven from one charge. The drag coefficient on the truck he said was 0.36, and he makes a comparison to a Bugatti Chiron which has a drag coefficient of 0.38, which is obviously not as good. There are plenty of cars with drag coefficients less than this, often between 0.3 and 0.35, which aren't even super fast sports cars, but remember this is for a truck, so the number is very impressive still. Then one big fear of truck drivers is jackknifing, which can happen in harsh conditions and slippery roads. But this new truck with its four independent motors will automatically adjust the torque on each wheel so it's impossible to jackknife. And of course the vehicle comes with lots of Tesla perks like autopilot, automatic emergency braking, and automatic lane keeping. If while driving the driver has a serious medical emergency where they can no longer control the vehicle, the truck will stay in its own lane and once it realizes the driver isn't taking control, it will come to a slow stop and call 911 if the driver does not respond. Then the glass is thermonuclear explosion proof glass. The importance of this comes from the fact that truck windows are large, so they usually crack around once a year, and once that happens you can no longer drive the truck, which means deliveries won't get to their destination on time, it's a hassle for lots of people, and this will prevent that. Now there's more that I did not include, but that's a lot of engineering we've seen so far which had to be taken into account. This is an electric vehicle, but I've said before that this does not mean this is a purely electrical engineering kind of project. In fact, not even close. Look at everything mentioned so far. 0 to 60 in 5 seconds, low drag coefficient, 4 motors, explosion proof glass, etc. Those things are not electric based projects. Mechanical engineers are needed for lots of these things like designing the motors, the frame of the car. Aerospace engineers can work on the aerodynamics which every car wants optimized. Maybe materials engineers help with the explosion proof glass and so on. As you can tell there's a lot of disciplines needed for just this one project. Then at the end he also unveiled that Tesla is working on bringing back the Roadster. 
The Roadster was Tesla's first vehicle they released which got them started before going on to things like the Model X, Model S, and Model 3. This new Roadster, he says, will go from 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds, being the first car to go from 0 to 60 in under 2 seconds. Plus, we'll have a range of 620 miles, longer than any other electric vehicle, and there's more which I won't go into, but there's lots of exciting things going on in Tesla right now. And I'm going to end there. Remember, a lot of these are very specific examples of research, and the majors I listed for each specific example are not necessarily the only ones that can lead you into those fields respectively. But hopefully this video gave you some insight, and if you liked it, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.